A very good evening to all. I am Varun Goenka, and on behalf of PSL, I'd like to thank, take this opportunity to welcome our esteemed participants to the PSL's virtual book launch event. I'm extremely delighted to present to you the most sought after book of recent times in brand management. As a leader in academic publishing, Pearson's successful track record stands testimony to an unparalleled delivery of the best products in academic learning, especially in the higher education sphere. Today's event holds tremendous significance for us as will unveil the fifth edition of strategic brand management by none other than Professor Kevin Lane Keller and Professor Vanita Swaminathan. It is truly an honor for me to welcome our esteemed authors to this virtual event. Dubbed as the Bible of branding, this book is one of the best sellers and in all terms has the finest content on brand management with the relevance in recent times. The book also covers story of Indian brands contributed by Professor Isaac Jacob, faculty and area chairperson marketing and international business, KJ Samaya Institute of Management in Mumbai. And the one name in the world of brands in India, Professor Ambi Parmeshwaran, who is a brand strategist and adjunct professor of marketing at SPGen Institute of Management and Research in Mumbai. Let's begin our session with Professor Keller, not just an author, but also a popular and an avid keynote speaker. Although he needs no introduction, let us take a sneak peek into his illustrious career in the world of marketing management and branding strategies. Professor Keller is the E.B. Osborne Professor of Marketing at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College, where he teaches MBA course on marketing management and strategic brand management. Previously, he has been associated as a professor with reputed universities like Stanford University, the University of California, and the University of North Carolina. He was also a visiting professor at Duke University and the Australian Graduate School of Management. Professor Keller's area of expertise lies in marketing strategy and planning and branding. His research in this field has been published in the three of the major marketing journals, the Journal of Marketing, the Journal of Marketing Research, and the Journal of Consumer Research. Not to mention with over 120 published papers his research have been widely cited and received numerous awards and accolades. It is worth mentioning here that he is also the co-author with the Philip Kotler, author of the iconic and all-time best-selling introductory marketing textbook, Marketing Management, published by Pearson, now in its 15th edition. But that's not all. Professor Keller is also a valued consultant for marketing in the corporate world. He has served as a consultant and advisor to marketers for some of the world's most successful brands, including Accenture, American Express, Disney, Ford, Intel, Nike, Samsung, Campbell, whatnot. Trust me, the list is too long to be covered in a single session. Now I request Professor Keller, who is also a popular and highly sought after speaker, to give us an overview of the fifth edition of the book. So, I request you to please come forth and help us with your words. Uh, thanks, you. thanks so much, Marin. It's great to, uh, to virtually come forth and be part of this event. We have done this in the past in person, multiple times uh, in Mumbai. Uh, it's always been a pleasure. It's always been a treat. So I do want to spend a little time at the beginning talking about the book and we have other things planned in this session. Uh, let me try to share my screen here from um, where I am in New Hampshire. So I'm in the New England Northeastern part of the US. So, so far so good. Let me try to go full screen here. All good? Okay, good. So, so the title, you notice on my title slide, I said the best yet. Well, I mean the best yet. This is the best edition of strategic brand management. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about uh, how this revision came about and what this revision's about about, but I, I feel confident and strongly this is the, the, the best yet. And it's exciting to be able to do that with this edition. And part of the, I think the importance of um, the book and, and, and what it does and how it does it 
is breadth, depth, and relevance. So it, it really tries to cover all the right branding topics in an in-depth sort of way, which involves academic research, all the rigor that kind of goes with that, but does it in a very practical way. So a lot of relevance. So, you know, really it's all academically proven. It's all about trying to help managers, students and managers learn about long-term long brand strategies and blending that academic and industry thinking. So a lot of frameworks are very rich in terms of foundational ways of breaking down problems and thinking about them. And then lots and lots of sort of practical insights that come out of that. So this edition, you know, maximizes breadth, depth and, and, and relevance, which I think are critical for any textbook, but especially a, a branding textbook. You know, this is, and the other thing about, you know, a, a branding textbook is, you, you know, it, you've got to bring it to life. You've got to deal with, uh, you know, examples and concepts and, and material that really matter now. So we draw on um, illustrative examples, case studies, other things that for brands marketed in India and then all over the world. So it has the, both the, the local or more regional and, you know, relevance, if you will, but then also sort of that international and global scope, which is so important. There are a lot of new brands that we cover, so it's important to bring those into the conversation. Uh, I think the enduring importance of branding is reinforced and reflected by how many successful new brands there are out there who have really made their mark in the global landscape, and we cover those. And we have in-depth branding briefs and boxes, all of which allow us to go in depth in ways that students can learn more or a manager can learn more about a certain topic. And one nice feature, I think it's a very cool feature um, that uh, uh, Vinita uh, brought into the book are these timelines. And the timelines kind of trace, if you will, the development of really notable brands like Amazon and Apple and Google and Harley uh, and Burberry. And just, it, it really brings them to life and highlights some of the, the different, their, state, their different stages of development and, and how they sort of uh, came about being what they are now. So very, very cool feature. So the, the other thing, you know, naturally there has to be a focus on digital branding. This is the world we live in. The fact that I'm sitting here and doing this in this out in the country and, you know, uh, in snowy, I might add, New England. So uh, a little bit of different kind of weather here than there. Um, it's just, it's remarkable. That's, that's the world we live in. And so in how important digital is to marketers in many, many different ways. So there's a whole new chapter that's devoted to this. And I think it's you know, deserving of that. So it's, it's one now of a crucial you know, uh, set of material that we've added. And with that are a whole lot of new topics that are either digitally or otherwise you know, needed to be included and are included. So attribution, I'll just list them real quick. Attribution modeling and social listening, netnography, influencers, understanding those key influencers and, and engagement and just in general sort of capabilities and, and what those are now for marketers digitally and otherwise. We talk about those digital native brand, vertical brands, you know, that are being created and are so successful, um, bicultural, multicultural consumers, you know, the, that aspect of the world and brand crises in social media you know, era. So those are just a, a sampling of some of the topics to give you kind of a flavor for the ways that the book has been uh, updated. But here's what's really new. What's really new is we have, you know, this is an, a, just an amazing co-author and I'm, there's a formal introduction coming up. So I, which with a lot of detail. So let me just highlight uh, uh, just a couple of things. And um, she's re been remarkably successful uh, academically. Uh, she is incredibly insightful and thoughtful and knowledgeable about branding in particular. And she's just been a, a joy to work with. So we, we had the opportunity to work closely together on the book and it was just uh, such a treat and felt so good and just so happy both with the process and the outcome. So I can't say enough good things uh, about Vanita. So I will stop there, but let others continue this uh, in a second with a, a more formal introduction, but it's, it just was exactly what the book needed. And I think one of the reasons why I say it's the best yet because she brought so much to this book, but she is not alone because What's also, what's not new, but what's also critically important is the Indian edition. And so having Isaac and Ambi, you know, together again and have us work together on this 
has been, you know, such a treat. And this book, this book is the standard of all of, of, of international adaptations of the Brandy book. And in, in, I think it's just as something in, in general for Pearson, I suspect is one of their most successful adaptations in both quality and impact. It, they just do a remarkable job just capturing the brand landscape in India and, and really bringing it to life in the book. And again, I can't thank them enough for what they've done. And it's just been a pleasure to work with them uh, through the years. It's been very gratifying. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I am married to Poonam Keller, the other Professor Keller, other Dean Keller. We're both in the Dean's office now. Um, we actually got married in Mumbai um, in 1992. So uh, India means I've got a, a lot of family, if you will, there uh, from, in, from Poonam's side of the family. Uh, I try to get back there whenever I can, uh, means a lot to me. Um, I don't keep up with cricket probably as well as I should. So you've got to let me off the hook on that one. It's a little harder here than there, let's put it that way. But it's, so this is a very important addition for me. And I, you know, I couldn't be more happy with the quality um, that, that this edition has with Vanita on board and then uh, Isaac and Ambi and having them both as part of the co-authors team again. It's just, it's been a real treat. So with that, I just, you know, I, I'll conclude, but I wanted to set that up a little bit of what this edition was about, and we can talk about some other things now. So last point, power of textbooks. The one thing I will say is this, you know, having, the, this is now, this book is 25 years old. So I've, you know, it now has a long history. And the thing I've learned through this time, you know, up to this day, is how, important a textbook, textbook can be. And I've just been so gratified by the response I've been getting you know, through the years uh, from students, managers and, that have used the book, uh, appreciate the book and value the book. And it's just been something that is, it makes such a difference uh, to me, but it, because it makes a difference to them and how much they say they refer to it and they use it. And that's what a textbook does. And that's why that's why breadth, depth, and relevance is so critical because you give that to a student and then they have that and can build off of that for years. And I hear that all the time, all the time from students and, and literally all over the world. So I just wanted to end actually on that note. So just wanted just to reinforce the importance of textbooks. And that's why I'm still re, you know, revising and still believe in them, still using them. I think they're critically important. So with that full stop, and let me hand it back and, and we'll keep, keep uh, our session going. So thanks so much. Thank you, sir. That was interesting and insightful as well. Let us now move to our next author, Professor Vanita Swaminathan. Professor Swaminathan is Thomas Marshall Professor of Marketing at the Kans Graduate School of Business, University of Pittsburgh. She is the director of the Kans Center for Branding. Her research focuses on brand, branding strategy and the condition that fosters consumer brand relationships. Additionally, her research investigates into successfully designed brand strategies to strengthen customers' loyalty as well as to form up stock market performance. More recently, her focus is on understanding how brand managers can leverage the power of social media to build stronger customer relationships. She has won numerous awards and accolades for her research, including the Lemon Award for the best dissertation-based article. Professor Swaminathan also served as the American Marketing Association's Academic Council. Previously, she has served as the president of the council. Professor Swaminathan's research and commentaries on branding and digital marketing are quoted in various international media outlets, such as Forbes, Washington Post, the Miami Herald, Los Angeles Times, the Economic Times, and BBC Brazil, to name a few. She has worked as marketing and branding consultant with companies such as the Hershey Company, the Kraft Heinz, Starkist, AC Nelson, GlaxoSmithKline, and Practol and Gamble. She has also extensively worked with small businesses on advising them regarding their digital marketing efforts. Professor Swaminathan, I humbly request you to share your acumen and expertise on brands in a digitally evolving world. 
Ma'am, you're on mute. Thank you, Varun. And thank you, Kevin, for that very warm welcome. I um, wanted to, uh, you know, in, in turn, uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Professor Kevin Keller. Uh, Kevin and I worked closely on this book. And when he first reached out and asked me to be on the book, I thought I was just uh, dreaming because it was such an amazing uh, opportunity. I have uh, worked in branding throughout both my uh, corporate career as well as uh, in academia. I've done a lot of research on the topic. Uh, and I've always looked up to Kevin as sort of the, you know, uh, 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 you know, one of the biggest thought leaders in branding, especially on the academic side. He has uh, the textbook uh, Strategic Brand Management, which has really pulled together the entire field of study for um, both academia as well as industry. And so to have somebody of his stature ask me to collaborate was literally a dream come true. So thank you, Kevin, for um, trusting me with this big, big project. Uh, and I also want to say thank you to uh, Professors Isaac Jacob and um, B. Parameshwaran. What a wonderful job on the India edition. I've been uh, you know, reading through all of the new cases. I've been learning a lot about new developments. Uh, and this particular opportunity of having uh, the chance to talk to everybody on an India launch is a spe special significance to me because I grew up in India. Um, I had my first opportunity to uh, work on a brand uh, in India's Hindustan Unilever. Uh, I lived in Mumbai at the time uh, and I grew up in Chennai. So this is a very special significance to me to be able to come back uh, and uh, launch this uh, uh, in, in uh, the Indian context. So thank you everyone for sparing time. I'm gonna uh, spend a few minutes talking about some of the ideas that are encapsulated in this um, uh, version of the Strategic Brand Management book. Uh, some of what I'm gonna be talking about stems from my own research, uh, which sort of is focused right now on uh, digital aspects of branding. And so I'm gonna just uh, share my screen here. Um, so I hope this is, uh, this works for everyone. Uh, you're able to see my screen. Yes. All right. So uh, the title of what I'm going to be talking about in the next few minutes is branding in a hyperconnected world. Uh, so we are, uh, as we all know, um, uh, witnessing how digital and digital strategy is taking over large aspects of what we do in branding and marketing strategy. And what has the, what the outcome of that has been a highly hyperconnected world. And Kevin earlier talked about how we uh, in the US and you in India are able to come together uh, on a web-based platform to have this conversation. Again, a, a very uh, clear example of how our world is so hyperconnected that we're able to synchronously have these meetings uh, pulling together individuals and uh, you know people from all over the world. And so uh, what is this hyperconnectivity done? So this is kind of a, uh, the focus of what uh, Kevin alluded to uh, in the new version of strategic brand management the textbook. Uh, but before we get there, I just wanted to give everyone a brief history of uh, branding. Um, some of the earliest uh, examples of branding can be traced back to 2700 BC. Uh, when Egyptians used to brand their livestock. So the only way you could tell um, cattle uh, that the owner uh, uh, you know, wanted to lay claim to was to brand them. And so you can see the marks on the backs of cattle had a distinct um, uh, trademark. And so this was how uh, people used to identify uh, one brand from another. And Indus Valley uh, civilization was also uh, known to have practiced this uh, particular um, uh, uh, you know, use of uh, branding on their cattle. So the traditional use of branding also gave way to um, more recent examples, but I also wanna give you a little anecdote about salt, right? So salt used to be used in the Roman empire as a way of paying people. So soldiers used to get paid in bags of salt Salt was known as solarium uh, argentum and salary, the word salary derives from the old word for salt, which used to be used as a way of paying people. But interestingly, such a commodity uh, as salt also uh, was able to be branded, right? So if you look at uh, this brand called Morton Salt, it took a commodity, right? It's salt as a commodity and was able to develop a brand around it. And so Morton Salt is an example of a branded salt. And so, 
Uh, I use this example to illustrate the importance of branding, even for most mundane products, right? And so a branded salt costs a little bit more than an unbranded salt. And then when we think about high-end salts, so there's a salt called Hawaiian Volcano Sea Salt, which is 540 cents per uh, pound, which shows you that you can really, if you build a brand around something, you can actually charge a significant premium, even for a mundane category like salt. So that gives you a little bit about the power of branding, which is a really critical force in our society today. So when we talk about uh, the definition of branding in our textbook, we talk about how it's a name, term, sign, website, or symbol that allows you to identify and differentiate one product from another. Um, and so this is, we call the small B of branding. The big B of branding is of course, the ability to create a distinctive offering and uh, become competitive in the uh, marketplace. So the textbook also talks about why we, uh, why, why are brands beneficial, both from a corporate standpoint as well as from a consumer standpoint. So if you're a consumer, you're going to a store, brands can help you mitigate some of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that, that you may have in choosing one product or another. So the textbook does a nice job of laying out some of these benefits for uh, consumers uh, but it also is a, a, a source of uh, status, right? So brands have symbolic value. Um, you know, pink Cadillac back in the day used to be a, a source of uh, status in society. And I'm sure in India, you have a preponderance of different kinds of car brands, some of which are status symbols um, in Indian society as well. And so uh, brands can have this symbolic value. Brands can also help uh, protect a firm, especially when there is a crisis, a reputation crisis of some kind, right? Um, we, uh, you know, uh, there, there are several crises one can draw upon and there are examples in the textbook. Um, in the Indian context, some years ago, there was the Maggie crisis that was, um, you know, uh, and, and we, I use that as, an, as a good example of a brand that was able to rebound from a reputation crisis. And so, having a strong brand can protect you even if there is a, a crisis. And for all of these reasons, uh, brands and, um, are among a firm's largest intangible assets. In the textbook, we identify some rankings. Um, this is a ranking of uh, global brands with Apple and uh, Google leading uh, the list. Uh, but there's also a ranking of brand finance in the book, uh, in the India edition, which talks about how brands like uh, Airtel, for example, um, and Tata's are uh, very significant in the Indian context. And so uh, the India version, again, brings about a lot of uh, uh, examples that'll help you situate some of the ideas in the uh, India, uh, Indian context. And so here are some examples of uh, top brands in the Indian context most valuable brands. And what's interesting to me is, um, uh, you know, I, I grew up in India over, you know, this was over 20 years ago. And what I, I find fascinating is a lot of the brands that I grew up with, like LIC or State Bank of India, Infosys, ICICI, Godrej, Tata, are still uh, in the top of the list in terms of um, India's top brands today, which in fact is a very, very good clear indication of how long-standing brands can actually produce and create value over a very long period of time. It also shows the, that India's, uh, that a, a firm's intangible assets are really encapsulated within their brand names. And, um, uh, and of course, that's not to say they're not new brands. There are several new brands uh, on these top lists, particularly as it pertains to uh, digital brands. And so we'll talk a little bit about that next. So what are some changes taking place? Again, um, when Kevin asked me to uh, work with him on this edition, uh, a big focus of ours was, was to integrate some of the developments taking place in digital marketing and social media. Uh, and we see that uh, a few things have changed dramatically when it comes to how marketing is done. Uh, one of the big changes is that it used to be that the brand used to advertise in a one-to-many fashion. So, uh, you know, a brand like uh, Reliance or Infosys would advertise, for example, on uh, television channels, and the communication was entirely one way, right, from the brand to the uh, to the audience. But what's changed is this ability for the audience to respond, thanks to digital marketing channels as well as social media. The conversation is now going both ways. 
and it's taking place even between consumers at large scale, right? So this many-to-many -many communications has been facilitated by uh, digital tools and digital platforms. The other thing that has changed is that with social media and connectivity, uh, consumers' attention spans have been uh, dropping significantly. And so the ability of firms to hold their audience's attention through advertising has dropped simply because of the vast amounts of information that consumers, especially those that are uh, digitally connected, have access to, right? And so this has created attention scarcity. And consumers are also responding, or, or there's a backlash from consumers against too much advertising, things like ad blocking. Uh, in the US and Europe, privacy regulations have uh, come about in a big way. The GDPR, uh, General Data Protection Regulation, was instituted in Europe. And that has had a big impact on marketers in Europe and also in the US. Uh, recently, there's been the California Consumer Protection Act, which has caused a lot of um, changes for digital marketers. Again, this gives you sort of a, a, a perspective of, um, of some of the global trends that are uh, taking place. Um, and then there's also peer-to-peer -peer sharing of goods, Airbnb, Zipcar, Uber. Uber is a global force. It's available everywhere. Um, and you have, of course, um, you know, information sharing on social media platforms. So these are some of the trends that we discuss in the book, especially in the chapter on digital. Um, there's also been a lot of new entrants, streaming services like Netflix, um, Amazon Prime uh, Video uh, have created, uh, uh, you know, new categories where, um, where competition is based on uh, digital entrants. Um, and uh, these are, uh, and this is an example of a category that has uh, experienced uh, new entrants and competition um, in the context of streaming services. Another trend that we discuss in the book is this notion of new types of technology enabled brands, uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality are trends that are taking place across the globe. Um, and somebody asked in the chat earlier, what has uh, COVID done, right? What is, how has it disrupted our way of life? Um, it has been, um, so one of the things I like to say is that COVID has not necessarily ushered in anything new, but it has certainly accelerated things that were already changing. So changes that were taking place five years down the road have, have already taken place because of, um, of this pandemic. And one of the things that we are seeing is this, this use of augmented and virtual reality. I was at an AR VR conference last year. Um, and there was a very interesting talk by uh, the brand manager for uh, Tanishk, uh, who talked about how in India, jewelry, shopping for jewelry is a social uh, uh, event. It's something that involves families going together to purchase jewelry for weddings and so on. So how do you replace that in a, in a pandemic, right? How do you replace that experience? And so uh, Tanishk had this uh, new augmented reality application, which allows you to try on jewelry at home. So you can actually see how you, uh, how the jewelry looks on you uh, just virtually by uh, shopping online and using augmented reality, they were able to make that happen. So a lot of these changes have been precipitated by, um, by, by the pandemic. Um, and direct to consumer brands, right? So we, we, we've discussed in the, in the book, uh, the development of brands that are born entirely on, online and that have a presence purely online. Uh, examples of Warby Parker and Glossier, but there's also uh, examples in the Indian context of DTC brands that have done really well. And that's another big trend that is discussed in the book. Um, so in terms of the, you know, what has that done for how we understand or think about brands? Uh, a big theme is really that networks, right? Networks of individuals on uh, interfirm as well as interpersonal have become key to transferring information as well as influence. Um, I, I, we talk about, this is uh, from my own research, uh, interfirm networks can be an important source of value for brands as well as brand marketers. Um, so um, this has, again, accelerated as a trend thanks to um, the growth of digital and social media. So this is another paper of mine that highlights how networks of firms uh, can also pose a big risk for brand marketers, right? If you're too reliant on a partner 
or um, there's a particular part of the network that becomes uh, weak for whatever reason, it can pose a significant risk to each individual node within that network. Online social networks, so you think about your Facebook groups, for example, can really determine how inf information and influence flows, right? And so uh, digital networks, uh, digital platforms like Facebook and Twitter um, and others have become a source of both information and influence when it comes to um, uh, brand information. Um, Another trend that we're seeing is online social influencers. I have a, a PhD student who's spending a lot of time thinking about this and working on this. And I have a paper in the Journal of Marketing that really does a deep dive on uh, online influencers and how do they impact how uh, consumers are making decisions about brands. And so uh, this is another big trend. We discuss, describe this in the paper, uh, in, the, in the textbook as well as in this paper. Um, and you know, I would uh, sort of highlight that as another important key trend. And these social influencers could be celebrities, right? It could be um, somebody who's a, a, a cricket player or a Bollywood actress, and uh, they, they could actually be um, non-celebrities as well. They could be experts in their own domain. They help amplify both positive and negative information about a brand. Um, another thing that we describe in the uh, textbook is, uh, as Kevin pointed out, uh, is how do you manage crises, right? Crises have the potential to spread rapidly like wildfire uh, through online social networks like Facebook and Twitter. This is a paper uh, of mine that I published in Harvard Business Review that does a deep dive into the Volkswagen scandal. This was published in 2016, so it's a few years old. Uh, but what we did in that was to try to develop a framework for how brand managers can study social media crises, especially as it pertains to their brands, we looked at, uh, we did a lot of analysis of big data. We used uh, techniques like natural language processing. We did some analysis of sentiment to show how uh, a brand manager can track how sentiment changes over time um, when there is a social media crisis. Uh, we also used this Volkswagen case study to show how we could parse the data that we're getting from social media to identify positive and negative uh, sentiment um, and in doing so, we are sort of, again, um, highlighting in the textbook some of the key trends or things that are taking place in the world of digital, particularly as it pertains to branding and brand management. So here's a general framework for you to think about how uh, all of these changes are, in fact, likely to impact um, consumer brand relationships. So if we think about it, marketers have a number of actions that they undertake, whether it's advertising, distribution, pricing, uh, partnerships, which lead to secondary associations. And there's a number of outcomes, um, such as brand attitude, brand loyalty, brand engagement. Uh, where social media and digital platforms come into play is in the fact that uh, they are able to um, convey some kind of me messaging about the brand to the consumer. Uh, and that gets enacted on different kinds of media. So platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and they're also, they use different messengers. So you think about online social influencers as messengers. So the medium, the messenger and the message can change or transform some of the messaging that marketers are engaging in to impact uh, how consumers view uh, brands. So in summary, sort of uh, pulling all these ideas together, we talk about how digital brands and digital branding is a big uh, phenomenon uh, in, throughout the textbook. It's embedded throughout the, in all of the chapters. Wonderful job of integrating case studies, a lot of case studies uh, from the Indian context that help highlight how these changes are impacting uh, the world of brands and brand management. Um, so obviously traditional advertising's influence is declining, but it's not, by no means am I ar arguing that it's going away entirely. Um, but there is a new source of information and influence, which is uh, digital platforms. Um, how do you manage a reputational crisis in this environment? That has changed. Um, how do you, how, how does, how, how do you uh, sort of inter interact with brands if you're a brand manager um, have you lost control of the conversation because conversations are now taking place between consumers at scale on social media platforms. We also talk about how big data and AI can be important tools for this new era of brand management. 
Um, we also talk about data privacy and we talk about how, um, you know, with the growth of te technology, brands can also be highly personalized. You can offer a special, uh, make special offers to individuals based on their very specific needs. I'm gonna stop there. I know it was a lot perhaps for a very a brief uh, presentation. Again, thank you all very much. I appreciate all your uh, interest. And uh, as Kevin said, textbooks are very critical uh, for our understanding, for our in-depth understanding of an area. I used to read uh, the earlier versions of strategic brand management that Kevin wrote, and I used to learn a lot from, from just his, uh, how he approached the topic across the different chapters. And it is my hope uh, that the same will happen to you as you uh, go through this, uh, this version of the textbook. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. In an era of digitization, your inputs and perspectives are noteworthy. Now coming to the Indian edition of the title, Strategic Brand Management 5th edition has been equipped with examples and case studies of Indian brands also. Powerhouse of knowledge in this segment, Professor Isaac Jacob and Professor Ambi Parmeshwaran have contributed relevant cases of brands to this book. With their expert understanding, analysis, and interpretation of brand management strategies, adopted by various Indian brands that have successfully established themselves. I now request Professor Ambi Parmeshwaran to give us an overview of the Indian brand stories highlighted in this edition of the book. Thank you, Varun. Um, can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So I just have a few slides to share, uh, just to give you a flavor. Uh, this is like uh, Professor Keller said, this is the third time we are collaborating with Professor Keller on the Indian version. We are honored, we are delighted to be partnering with him once again and with uh, Professor Vanita Swaminathan. Thank you very much for uh, having, us, having us on board. Uh, I think before the audience joined, we were chatting and um, the last time we did a launch like this, it was at the rooftop room of the Trident Hotel from where you can see the beautiful Queen's Necklace of Mumbai. Uh, you know, so we can't do it this time, uh, Professor Keller, so our apologies, uh, but we are compensating it by actually getting three times the number of people here. You know, that time we probably had about 150 people in the audience. Now we have close to, I think 500 uh, listening to us. So once again, thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity and for your kind words about the Indian version. So, what, you know, from the day we started, you know, Professor Jacob and I started working together, we said, look, we should preserve the integrity of the global textbook. These are proven templates, proven tools, techniques, processes. So we will not mess around with that. What, what we will do is to retain all those global brands and global stories are there in the book, which includes in the latest edition, there's Netflix, P&G, of course, Unilever, DuPont, Nike, Disney, Accenture, Apple, IBM, Amazon, Burberry, I can go on. Uh, as you see, these are some of them are B2B brands, some of them are B2C brands, some of them are physical brands, some of them are digital brands. It's a mix of all these brands. All these global brands are all there. But what we've done is to remove brand stories and brand briefs, which are probably not going to be relevant to an Indian audience. And uh, so we pulled out a lot of them and we've replaced them with Indian Indian brands, Indian stories. I think Professor Swaminathan spoke about some of these. So these are all there in the book. Amul, a brand which you know some of us actually had the chance of working on. Santur, Safola, Royal Enfield, Godrej Taj, MRF, Mahindra, of course, Tata, several brands of the Tata Group, Airtel, and from Unilever Wheel. These are all some of the brands which have been featured in the book. So some of you may be wondering, you know, how come these guys are only showing these old brands, I mean, these are all on an average 50 year old brands. So hold your horses. So let me tell you the other brands we've featured. Uh, we have a whole section on Geo. We've talked about the Tata airline, Vistara. We talked about uh, Rupe, which is an amazing, uh, you know, credit card brand, which is giving a tough time to Visa and MasterCard in India. We got, of course, Paytm. Uh, we've got, you know, Incredible India, which is the India uh, Indian tourism's campaign. We've got 
and some small brand. There was a question in the chat box, you know, are you only talking about big brands? No, we've got actually a little brief on Paperboard, which is a small brand, and on a brand called Yoga Bar, which again is a small brand, right? So we've looked at mix, and of course, O oh, Calcutta, again, a relatively small uh, restaurant brand, uh, friends of ours. So all these brands are there, and, and last count, I think uh, we probably have close to 60 plus brands which are featured in the book. And uh, also we should explain that uh, out of those 60 brands, there are about 15 brands have been discussed in somewhat detail. I'm not saying into 30 page case studies, but you know, one page, half a page case study on these brands. This includes the Mahindra Scorpio. Of course, those of you who are hitting the bottle, Old Monk Rum, uh, Mumbai Indians, which is a cricket team, Pulse Candy, which is actually a candy, which is outstanding success, Zomato, delivery service, and even personality brands. Uh, you know, Chef uh, Sanjeev Kapoor has been featured as a, as, a, as a brief. And of course, we have tried to bring in stuff which is relevant to Indian audience. There is a whole, uh, you know, section on legal brandings, uh, legal issues of branding in India. Uh, we are grateful to AC Nielsen for giving us the AC Nielsen brand building model. There's a whole section on that, something like 10 pages. They shared a whole lot of stuff with us. And of course, we've got, you know, uh, discussed brand personas on Dream11. So all I'm just to say that this is just a highlight of what we've uh, added to the book. There are many, many more interesting things for people to dig into. Uh, our, as they say, we aim to please. So we've tried to bring in as much as we can from the Indian audience, uh, because you're doing it for the third time, we've been learning as we go along on what, what is appreciated, what is useful for students. We also use it in our own teaching. So we know what is useful, what gets used. Uh, so with that, let me uh, stop sharing and I will hand over to Varun and then to Professor Jacob, right? So, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank that you. was interesting how brand strategies work. Now I request Professor Isaac Jacob to take us through one of the most significant topics of the branding in the digital era. So please. Okay, okay, okay. May I share screen. May I share screen. May I share screen. Am I am I audible, please? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So let go ahead. Okay, here goes. Okay, is that fine? Yes. I've seen. Okay, I'm going to talk about. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. It's been a great pleasure all the while. It's about uh, more than ten years that we have been collaborating, and this time we also have uh, Dr. Vanita uh, Swaminathan on. Uh, you know, as the co-author, as a brilliant way of taking this book forward. For instance, as such. Uh, so therefore, the whole digital platform has been very significantly, uh, you know, uh, dovetailed into the brand management, uh, you know, entire curriculum, for instance, as such. So therefore, thank you very much, Kevin. It's been always, always and always a great pleasure uh, to interact with you and, of course, to work on the uh, third, fourth and now the fifth edition. Uh, and what is that? Of course, we've uh, first time that we are collaborating on this, but I think we've taken some phenomenal stuff from your uh, nuggets of truth in the area of brand management in the in specifically in the area of digital branding and things like that and have taken that uh, forward for instance as such and as always uh, ambi permission has been a great uh, a great ally to say the least he has been very critical of uh, branding and things like that as such i have always been a very 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 good foray uh, in terms of really a sounding board and of course he also been able to work together now in the uh, three editions that we've been working about. What I'm going to talk about is basically a branding in the dig digital era, for instance. We looked at some of the brands that have really come up and cropped up, for instance, as such in the last uh, maybe uh, maybe roughly about six years or thereabout as such, which are really made forays into consumer, uh, you know, uh, consumer area, for instance, as such, and building up very strong uh, brand, uh, you know, in their own field, for instance, as such. I'm going to talk about uh, Dream 11, which is in the area of creating uh, brand persona, for instance, as such, or, or 
or a consumer based persona how they have exploited the use of integrated marketing communication that the digital forum and the digital uh, uh, you know uh, platform to build a huge brand for instance in the area of a digital brand and i'm also going to talk about uh, geo life which is the uh, a major 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 a uh, brand that has now come up as such uh, in india this is a reliance geo brand that i'm going to talk about uh, and both are both are very iconic brands in their own way uh, built up on the digital forum and the digital uh, you know uh, uh, platforms for instance so let's speak about uh, dream level as such now cricket has always been a great uh, you know it's a religion there are 30 the a uh, million gods i'm told and if i will google and find out they are there uh, and but there is only one religion that you actually follow so dream 11 has been a major uh, brand that has been uh, created on the uh, sports fantasy uh, you know platform which is of course a very new category that has been built in the last maybe 6 uh, 7 years or there about as such so we'll look at that uh and this is basically looking at how this particular brand has been created on the basis of this very uh interesting insight for us the fanatic fans in cricket especially uh want to display their uh, superior knowledge about the sport itself therefore gaining a lot of bragging power and the bragging rights for instance and if they can make some money on the this thing which of course talks about winning or they'll be very very happy for instance as such so based on this particular insight the company brought out this particular digital uh product for instance as such which is of course uh, uh it's an online uh interactive uh, you know kind of a situation that has been created or a brand that has been created as i mentioned in the last 6 years or there about uh so you have to download this particular app you actually have to become a a part of the community of playing uh, cricket online creative uh, uh, cricket for instance as such and the insight is that you know people are looking at how to create uh, it, the, the the slogan used here is ye apna game hai this is my game i own this game and i play this game i interact with other people who are there for this building up a 500 million users perhaps in the last uh, and 3 years to be exactly fine and we're going to talk to you about as we go by as such so effectively what they did was to how do they created this uh, 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 user persona for instance as such based on this particular uh, you know quote that is there they emphasizing on the culture that people have got they are seeped in the culture of uh, basically uh, cricket for instance as such uh, they looked at a whole lot of uh, data and uh, they analyze data big data analytics have all kinds of things were basically used it also gives you the ownership to play the game for instance as we go by for instance uh and there is a performance rating you can know at the end of the game uh how you have fared for instance have you won have you not won you know what is the what's happening so that performance indicator is a very significant one and more importantly i think this was the user persona that was actually created and it's like akin uh to the uh the you know the the archetype that has been ind- indicated in the 12 archetype that you look at this is the regular guy that they are speaking all about and the regular guy in india of course is more the young uh, youthful dynamic cricket fanatic whom uh, the target uh, the, the target consumer is basically focused on for instance as such and building up this entire thing about uh you know playing to win for instance playing to win and of course getting the bragging power in order to talk in the adda or down the corner or wherever it is and now it's gone online for instance so in order to get that particular you know conversation running with the community for instance as such they roped in perhaps one of the most astute uh one day international player for instance and that is uh, our very own msd or very lovingly called mahi or what ms dhoni for instance whether it is behind the uh, wicket or in front of the wicket actually playing uh, a game of uh, cricket he is the strategist he has been and he has won a whole lot of games for instance he's a big fan uh, you know following uh, as far as uh, your uh, ms dhoni is concerned as such now based on that the platform that they choose was uh, the big platform the huge platform which is basically the the ipl platform or the cricket platform there's no bigger 
uh, you know, show, especially in India. And now, if you better look at even abroad than the IPL, uh, you know, games, for instance, as such. So they looked at the platform and built this entire uh, brand on the basis of the cricket platform in order to ensure that they dro drove in. They used the earlier uh, 2019 uh, ICC uh, games, for instance, they cut video, put it up on YouTube, uh, you know, shared the entire thing and build up this entire uh, aspiration uh, to build up on the basis of the kind of cricket platform that was basically there. Therefore, enunciating the fact that, you know, it is one of the one of the most uh, interactive, one of the most uh, involving, uh, you know, and passionate way of actually engaging uh, with the uh, with the customers, for instance, as such. Uh, they went on to an overdrive, which was in 2020, when they actually went on to uh, talk about the fact that they, they even sponsored the IPL. IPL, 222 crores were spent as far as last year's, uh, you know, uh, IPL sponsorship is concerned. But besides that, you know, Mahi or MS Dhoni became the guy who could play a game with you, for instance, as such. So the regular guy saw himself actually almost, you know, interacting with the great guys like, you know, uh, your uh, Dhoni and the rest of the gang. And they actually use that. They use that. In fact, they roped into of the best guys in the business in One Day International uh, in the area of uh, IPL, for instance. As such. So this is how they actually went about creating huge amount of uh, uh, likability as well as building. <laughs> और आग पे पानी फेरने वाले को कैप्टन कूल ड्रीम 11 आईपीएल चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स वर्सेस रॉयल चैलेंजर्स बैंगलोर लाइव 10 अक्टूबर शाम 7:30 बजे ओके सो टचिंग द कॉर्ड्स एज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर इंस्टेंस एज अ बिल्डिंग अप अ ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ फैन एंड देयरफॉर लिंकिंग ऑन टू द ऐप एंड एक्चुअली प्लेइंग द गेम फॉर इंस्टेंस एज सच सो 50 मिलियन यूजर्स and just one product fit, that's what they are talking about. They have not even got into the other uh, games, for instance, which they will do, for instance, are creating sports fandom. They will never move from this particular platform, for instance, as such. Building up this humongous, uh, you know, user base, for instance, as such, which is roughly about 100 million, uh, one that is basically on at this particular moment. So you'll find that uh, Dream11 has uh, uh, only scratched the surface. And this is what, uh, Harsh Jain is saying, the CEO, saying that we are only 14% and we are still more a long way to go, for instance. And that's how this particular brand has been created, especially on the uh, digital platform, using uh, the drive as far as uh, cricket as a religion itself is concerned as such. So 33 uh, million gods, but just one religion, and that is cricket in this particular country. Such wonderful way of taking it up into a distinctly different level, for instance. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to Geo. This is a humongous case, a huge case, for instance, the largest startup in the world, for instance. And this was launched in uh, September of 20, uh, 20, uh, 2016, for instance, as such. Uh, it was launched on a significant promotional activity that actually set the cat amongst the pigeons in the, uh, in the, tel uh, in the uh, mobile telephony business in this particular country. They gave uh, data and... Uh, voice, uh, you know, uh, free of charge for four months. And that really created huge amount of, uh, you know, I'm just about, it's like getting into a, uh, into a, a, you know, ring with Tyson. And uh, the other guys did not know what hit them. And they increased uh, this particular, you know, this promo uh, and by another four months. By that time, everybody was basically reeling and up and down as such. This is the entire lot of the product portfolio that was built up in the area of media, education, wellness, and health, gaming, you name it. You just name it, for instance. And they got into gaming in a very significant manner because in the, in the pandemic, the whole concept about gaming and esports really is taking on, for instance. They're setting up a huge amount of esports facilities and things like that in India as such. Now, in order to reach this entire lot of audience, for instance. They went into an overdrive as far as looking at large format uh, advertising itself is concerned, broad-based format advertising, but getting onto the sponsorship platform. That's a very important thing because 
the cost per contact then becomes much lower and therefore you can actually afford these kind of costs for instance be it the uh, film fair uh, awards or the uh, very iconic kon banega karorpati or the ipl format where even the geo was put on to the best guys and this jersey was basically uh, sponsored by uh, dream uh, by geo for instance as such or actually you know tying up with star power for instance uh, like the bollywood star the most trending bollywood stars were also basically roped in now besides this this was the clincher as far as uh, you know creating credibility for network from geo itself is concerned because we have a lot of call drops that is happening uh, in india and this is uh, something which has been plagued uh, for almost all the uh, brands in this country but they went out to an overdrive when uh they tied up with uh, you know uh kon venega karorpati and asking for f- f- phone a friend was basically done on geo chat for instance i can just imagine amitabh bachchan saying uh you know on the on the network and talk and being uh, seen and heard by almost everybody in this particular country uh bol raha hu kon venega karorpati se and that for please do it and please talk to them somebody is asking for phone a friend for instance as such besides that of course they went on to an overdrive for almost all in almost all the social media uh, platforms for instance as such but if you were to really look at the big one was uh, really looking at uh, this particular endorsement from our very own prime minister uh, which said that dedicated to india and 1.2 billion indians for instance as literally took the cake and uh, it was on sunday morning you had a full page uh, that was really brought about for instance and in, in almost all the newspapers uh, and this created a huge amount of this thing so how it has impacted is uh, the way that revenues went up 9 billion uh, you know uh, worth of uh, the revenues were basically built up uh, the subscriber base went through the roof for instance 387 and still counting for instance as such went on to become make geo uh geo live the number one brand uh in the mobile telephony market for instance as such and i heard of uh, airtel and vodafone which were all uh, almost legacy brands in the area of uh, uh, of uh, mobile telephony for instance as such so that's how it actually panned out it's become the largest in india and it's now the third largest network in the world for instance in a span of exactly uh five years to be exact for instance 2016 to 2000 and uh, and 21 for instance this is of course the final uh, uh, nail on the uh, in the area so can geo be the next uh, tech giant for instance this is uh, something which i picked up from uh, from mobile uh, from fortune uh, media for instance as such and quoting ambani said that he took perhaps one of the biggest risks in the world for instance as such but finally it paid off and here you have the biggies in the business tying up with geo be it uh, facebook and also investing in uh, geo in this country uh, looking at uh, even uh, google for instance they have also invested in the geo uh, platform for instance to, to get into the indian market and of course you have uh, you know uh, satya narella uh, tying up with mukesh ambani and making it into a joint venture to take cloud computing Uh, and market cloud computing in it to india as such so the jonicom lately has become perhaps the the biggest uh, you know uh, darling of the brand for instance as such so uh, thank you very much with that i think i end my presentation on two of the brands that we are talking about thank you very much thank you thank you okay Parun, you need to unmute, unmute yourself. Sorry. Thank you, sir. In the era of digital transformation, this was certainly eye-opening. And the time has arrived when we unveil the fifth Indian edition of strategic brand management. I would request our esteemed authors to kindly unveil the book.
Thank you. Thank you all. Now, uh, I would hand this session to Anandita. Please take the Q&A session forward. Thank you. Thank you, Varun. So I'm sure with the experts on the panel, uh, most of us have so many things to ask regarding today's discussion on the forum. And of course, the excitement is all the more because we are fortunate to have Professor Keller with us today. And, uh, but with the q and I would like to mention that we have already received pre-submitted questions, but given the limited time, we will try and get the answers from our authors to as many. So I'll begin with uh, the question and answer session with Professor Keller. Uh, so, so the first question uh, for you is, what is the role of empathy in strategic branding? Yeah, um, before I answer the question, just once more, I wanna thank Ambi and, and Isaac for great talks today and all the work that they've done. Vanita, and you can see how good she is in that talk. I, th I was looking through the chat and I was, seen all the questions, great questions. And I was thinking, well, Benita, but you know, kind of spoke a little bit about that. So she um, just did a great job. So, and terrific and just shows exactly how good. And again, Pearson, the whole Pearson team, I don't want to leave them out because Pearson India, Pearson here in the US, so they're just phenomenal. So empathy is really critical. <clears throat> I, you know, it's one of those, so much about what marketing is, is the ability to understand consumers in a really deep, rich way and being able to project yourself into their mindset. And I always talk about branding in terms of the head and the heart. There's a rational and emotional part. You can't really arrive at good marketing strategies and positionings and, and solutions until you really understand it. And so all that we talk about, and there's so much going on in, in this world in marketing, the way tactically and whether it's channels and communications and, and how digital has changed that profoundly, all of it always comes back to the insights that you have and your ability to understand how people think and feel that you're marketing to. And that's, to me, that's one of the most important things. And so when I work with companies, one of the things I always spend a lot of time on is the front end of the process because you can't start, you know, turning the crank and doing all the wonderful things to build a brand that are out there and available, all those tools, if you're not pointed the right way, if you don't really have those insight. So I think empathy is a great start point because it forces you to really try to understand and internalize and, and be sympathetic to what consumers really need and want, and then develop your brand strategy around that in a way that's compelling, and then you can execute against that. Thank you, sir. Yes, certainly connecting with the consumer through empathy is important for branding. The next question that we have for you, sir, is how has digital branding affected traditional branding? Yeah, that was, I mean, again, that was one of the questions where I'm thinking, Benita really did a nice job laying that out. So the thing I, you know, thing I would emphasize, and again, she highlighted so many angles to this, and the book has this in you know, all through it, plus a you know specific chapter. But to me, that you know, there's a, a lot of different aspects. The one that's just so profound is comes back to channels and communications. And the way you have now to communicate to consumers or consumers to communicate to each other is, as Vanita pointed out, many to many and all the different variations, but also the way you have to sell. And, that, and, and a lot of great brands are being built direct to consumer. And so that, you know, that to me is one of the most important uh, aspects, I think, of the digital revolution is, is but the key is integration. Because you, you, there are multiple ways to communicate. There are multiple ways to distribute. How do you integrate? How do you make sure that you're pointing them together in, in the right way and maximizing so that, you know, their, their uh, um, synergy so that the whole is greater than some of the parts? So to me, that's kind of the, one of the really, really critical things tactically. And then strategically, and again, Benita alluded to this, is how you learn from what you can hear online and other ways digitally to complement other more traditional sources of research and ways to learn. So again, I think it's it's in both cases, you can see how it's an additive tool, but the, to me, the magic and the best marketers are no, those who know how to blend them in ways so the traditional and the digital work really well, strategically and tactically. Thank you, sir. Yes, blending <clears throat> both the strategies can work, then that's the right perspective. Uh, all right, now moving on to uh, our next author, 
Professor Swaminathan. Hello, ma'am. Uh, the question for you is, the COVID wave has hastened the speed of the entire digital transformation. How do you see brand stories with focus on their resilient strategies during these times? You've already mentioned Tanish. Would you like to throw light on some other brands as well? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the key point there is really it has hastened transformation. I don't know if it has going to fundamentally alter the trajectory that brands were already on with regard to digital transformation. But brands that have not uh, adopted digital, um, I think there's some uh, example in the book at, uh, of um, a, a retail outlet that did not actually uh, adopt uh, you know, digital channels. So uh, any, any brand that did not go down the digital route in the right way during the pandemic has, uh, you know, potentially is, is going to be left behind. And that's a big, big, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing that has uh, come to light in the pandemic. And we know uh, of store closings, right? Retail store closings um, in a large, uh, in large outlets in the US. And there's, I'm sure, examples in uh, India as well of retail stores that didn't go the e-commerce and online route that were forced to close. And so there's a real danger um, that COVID was accelerating these, these closures and um, uh, these, these failures of certain brands that didn't adapt quickly enough. Uh, at the same time, we, we allude to this as a K-shaped economy where uh, some, uh, some brands have really taken off as a result of COVID and other brands have really uh, dropped significantly. So if you imagine the letter K, it's sort of half the brands have really taken off thanks to the uh, COVID, uh, I wouldn't say thanks to the COVID pandemic, but on account of the COVID uh, uh, crisis and others have really dropped off. And so whether you're on the upswing or the downswing really depends on how fast you were able to transform your business and incorporate uh, digital modes of communicating as well as connecting with consumers. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> yes, true that, you know, COVID is compelling us uh, to look into a more digitized manner. It, it has hastened it. So thank you. I now move to our next author, uh, Professor Ambi Parmeshwaran. Hello, sir. Uh, so the question for you is, has brand loyalty been affected due to the rise of the concept of focus on availability during the pandemic? Well, I think, um, you know, two things have happened during the pandemic, at least I um, can speak about India. One is uh, consumers are now becoming somewhat more choosy of what brands to buy. So I would say the bigger brands have benefited from the pandemic uh, and the smaller brands have got pulverized. Okay. Uh, so there is a gravitation towards the known familiar brands, but this has to be seen in context of different levels of society. Of course, the poorer people have been affected very badly with the trend week, so they've actually traded down. So I think we will see brand loyalty probably getting a boost thanks to the pandemic. I know that in, in areas like packaged foods, uh, there's been a huge uptick in India, uh, in the entire category of ready to cook and ready to eat. I think we've written about uh, uh, Safola oats in the book. So they were all going, Safola oats is an outstanding example, but the rest of the category has not been growing very well over the last decade, but this year, or uh, rather for the last 12 months or 14 months, the ready to cook and ready to eat categories have gone up because consumers are now saying we'll buy packaged branded products. So I think my suspicion is uh, consumer is going to go to what he or she is familiar with, which will be, you know, familiar brands, right? So, and one small thing, uh, Anita, I need to mention, we should thank a number of companies which shared information with us in India, which shared images, uh, which shared photographs and pack, pack, pack designs and stuff like that, uh, which, you know, we're deeply grateful to them and they've always been great supporters of us. So once again, thank you to all of them. Yeah. Back to you, Anita. Thank you so much, sir, for answering the question. That was insightful. And now uh, I move to our next author, Professor Isaac Jacob. Hello, sir. Your question is, 
brand visibility is an essential part of creating brand identity. In a country like India, how do you see that happening for local brands on digital platforms? A very practical question, to be very frank. And uh, this has to be uh, looked at from a very situational perspective, no doubt about it as such. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the section that I took on uh, geo foreign things, it's a highly broad based kind of a, uh, you know, brand that has been created because it goes across urban, rural, small markets, almost everywhere, except for perhaps touching on the bottom of the bottom of the pyramid. The, uh, the geo has touched almost every sec sector. Of the it's also gone into B2B. It has also gone into B2C and all, all you know, entire range of your uh, segments have been really covered for instance as such. In this kind of situation, because we must really understand that India is not one market. India is not just 28 markets. India is more, much more than those number of markets which are there as such. So in order to get saliency or get, uh, you know, uh, brand awareness and uh, visibility, for instance, is not only good enough for you to get visibility, but also to get impact as such over a period of time. And therefore, uh, you have to look at very broad based kind of a media, uh, because if you see even today, if you see the media scenario in this country, uh, TV still rules the roost. It's about 36% or 37% of the total proportion of the media spend, for instance. So I would go by profiling the audience. Whom do I want to talk to? How broad the you know, audience is? Where are they located, for instance? And therefore, I would basically go by the fact that unless I want, unless I actually profile the audience, I'll be basically you know, barking up the wrong tree, will not get the, by getting one exposure or a two exposure or three exposure, we may not be able to get the kind of uh, saliency levels up. And therefore, that could be one of the uh, no-no kind of thing. Whereas, look at the other, look at the other scenario. If you were to look at the millennials, for instance, in this country, 460 million millennials in the country, as such, which is the third largest country in the world after China, India, and the millennials in India is the third largest country in this particular. So most of them are quite a lot. If if, I, if you see the Gen Zs they are basically completely uh, more or less, more or less, uh, you know, they are, they are digital natives. So there I would go for uh, using a whole lot of digital. I'd be overweight on, on digital marketing, for instance, because I'm actually hitting out at the guys and I'm hardly any waste would be there as such. Uh, so if I were to basically market, I, my, my, my take on this particular question is that you have to be very practical in terms of how you would be able to profile the audience whom are we talking to? Not necessarily only the uh, demographics and other things, including media behavior, for instance, is also going to play a huge role, for instance. So unless and until you do that, we will, uh, you know, it's not just getting awareness that matters, but it's also getting impact, which is, I think, the important factor that one has to keep in mind as such. So media planning is going to play a big role in this particular thing. And that's why you'll find that till today, a uh, whole lot of large platforms, uh, broad market uh, platforms, always going for uh, getting cost-effective impact using television media, for instance, as such. So that's how I would basically, uh, you know, uh, grapple with that particular question as such. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, sir. If listening to you, this answer was really insightful. If listening to you is so interesting, I'm sure reading the book will be more interesting for all participants. So, so with that, uh, I think, uh, thank you our esteemed authors. And with this, we come to the end of our Q&A session for the evening. But before we move on, let me inform all attendees in today's forum that we are providing a link in our chat box. It's a Google form in which you can enter your queries regarding the book, its availability and other details. Also, we would like to mention that strategic brand management fifth edition is now available in the market. For the attention of all our faculty friends attending the webinar and launch, Pearson is ready to support your efforts at quality brand management education by providing you with a host of teaching aids and support material. Do contact us with your specific request. With that, we come to the end of this wonderful event. But again, every end is the new beginning. With that thought, 
I'd like to thank everyone for being with us and gracing the event. Stay safe and maintain social distancing. Take care and good night. Thank you.